It is the Seahawks virtual pre-draft party. I'm G. Scott. That is Stacey Ross. We got a guest, Stacey, and I'm excited <clears throat> about this mm-hmm. guest. I've known him since he was a rookie, three-time pro bowler, all pro, NFC champion, and one of the best linebackers to ever do it. Number 51, Lofa Tatupu. Lofa, what's up, man? What's happening, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you. I want to get right to it, man. Um, it's draft day. Tell us what draft day was like for you, man. Well, I literally paint the picture behind me. It's a beach, right? So Oceanside, <laughs> California, that's where we had the draft party at one of my dad's roommates uh, from SC. His roommate gave us the house, and we just, about 40 or 50 of us, gathered over there and, uh, you know, watched my dreams come true. What was it? What was it like? Do you remember when you finally got that call? Tell us about that. Well, yeah, you know, what's interesting is we didn't have cell service over there. So, yikes. So, it was, yeah, yikes. My first conversation <laughs> with Russell, Tim Russell and Holmgren was not that pleasant. Um, they asked me if I even wanted to play football. But uh, so I, I didn't get the call. I didn't get it like everybody else uh, that you, you notified and, you know, you have that moment to just give your family the hugs. We literally were just sitting there, eyes glued to the TV, and up pops my name, 45th selection, uh, low for the tube of linebacker out of USC. So the place erupted. Yeah. And then we had to find a phone with service and make the call to my agent. And, uh, but, you know, it worked out. And, uh, you know, I got to spend the next, you know, uh, six years of my life up here in, in the Pacific Northwest. There you go. Could have gone with carrier pigeon. Always an option. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> when people talk about the draft experience, um, what's something that always surprises just kind of casual fans who haven't ever been part of that experience as a player? When you talk to them about what it's like as a player in that draft experience, is there anything that isn't obvious to us? Um, I mean, it's um, I try to stay in the moment. I, I didn't get too carried away with like where I was going to go or, you know, what round, uh, because I think a lot of guys can get caught up in that. So um, that's probably the biggest thing that the, the fans, you know, I mean, they, they get a glimpse of it when they, they show it on TV and, you know, or someone's in the green room for too long. And so um, luckily I didn't have to go through that. I, I wasn't going to be a first rounder. So I, I chose to stay home <laughs> and uh, just be with family at that time. You, uh, you know, go, go, ahead, oh, go ahead, G. Oh, so no, you no, spent no. also some time as assistant linebackers coach with Seattle. What's uh, the kind of process, in the draft look like for coaches? How involved are they in that kind of thing? Oh, it's, it's incredible. Um, the scout, John and the scouts, they do a phenomenal job, you know, of let us give our input. But ultimately, you know, they, they've drafted so well for so many years that, um, you know, they, they, they take that in, but they have a system and, uh, I mean, it's working. You look at, they, they find value in every single draft. You, you know, you go back and there's, there's a player or two that just becomes a, a star. Hey, Lofa. Um... I know you're excited, like we all are excited about this draft. What are you looking forward to the Seahawks doing with their 27th pick in this draft? Well, I mean, if history repeats itself, we will probably be trading out of the first round. And I'm sorry to say that, <laughs> fans. But, uh, you know, and that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, John, he knows value. And so if, if the guy that we, – we go into this going for best available. We don't have glaring needs. A pass rusher, sure. Maybe some O-line depth for the future. And, and maybe a running back somewhere in there because um, our, our two guys are, are coming back from injury. But they, that's the beauty of what they've done the last, you know, decade or so is they haven't had to draft for need. It, it's been purely best player available. Groom that player to become, you know, a future All-Pro in, you know, Bobby Wagner, K.J. Wright, and, and you know, Russell Wilson. You know. Is there any so, player you've kind of fallen in love with in this draft that you kind of hope falls to Seattle, if not in the first round, maybe a bit later? No, I, there, I, there's plenty of great players. We've been linked to a couple, you know, the, the DM position, uh, the kid uh, Matos out of uh, Penn State, and then also um, Epinesa out of Iowa. And so, you know, they'd be great additions. Um, I'm holding out hope that we still land Clowney. Uh, <laughs> he's a phenomenal player. And uh, hopefully we get some, you know, worked out there. Uh, but love all the moves that we've done in the offseason because we've, we've really got depth on, on both O and D line. And, um, you know, when we had that Super Bowl run in, in 13, both lines were very deep. Uh, two Pro Bowl players in, in uh, Michael Bennett and uh, Cliff Averill were backing up Red Bryan and, and Chris Clemens for that year, just, you know, for that year. But uh, so that, that's the kind of depth that we had 
up front. Lofa, appreciate you, man. Thanks for hanging out with our virtual pre-draft party, brother. Appreciate you having me. Go Hawks. All right.